Hello, 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 hello. Hope you guys are all well. So, um, in this daily diary, I'm going to be discussing the problems that I found while making all my films. And where I screened the films after I made them. Like on what media platforms or festivals and things like that. And I will be talking about why I made the films the way I made them. Like I'll be explaining each of them differently as we go in, in the video. And what I'll be talking about what I've learned from the module. And if I liked it, enjoyed it or, you know, just got it over with and done. But yes. Stick with me and I will take you guys through this journey. Let's recap. Last night, we lost my car, we accepted stolen money from a transsexual stripper, and now some space nerds want us to find something we can't pronounce. I hate to say it, Chester, but maybe we should cut back on the shivian. <laughs> You got a tattoo! <laughs> so did you, dude! No! Oh. Oh. Dude, what does my tattoo say? Sweet! <laughs> what about mine? Dude, what does mine say? <laughs> Sweet! <laughs> what about mine? Dude, what does mine say? Sweet! <laughs> what about mine? Dude, what does mine say? <laughs> Sweet! What about mine? Dude, what does mine say? Sweet! What about mine? Dude, what does mine say? Sweet! What about mine? Dude! What does mine say? Swing! Hey, Mommy, what is wrong with you? I'm dying anyways. If there's a chance it will get you water, it'll be worth it. Are you nuts? Gloria, I just want you to know, back at the zoo, it was never the doctors or the prescriptions that kept me going. It was always you. Seeing you every day, that's what kept me going. Oh, 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 oh. Maurice, what just happened? Have a look at this lioness. She's out doing the grocery shopping and cannot make a fucking decision on which brand of meat to choose. There's a wide range of wildebeest available. She's not a racist who gets fired up over Halal certification. She couldn't give a rat's ass about studies saying meat gives you cancer. I believe she is purely looking for the chunkiest fucker she can get her jaws around. Value for bloody money. She's quiet, happy to be patient. She knows the wildebeest are dumb as fuck and she can cherry pick at her legion. Look at her judging them. I don't want that one. It's got a skinny ass. That one has no thighs. That wanker has a stupid look on his face. Oh, that one has a child. I can't kill her. Oh, but in comes hubby and says, just fucking pick something. Holy shit, he is hungry. We don't need a fucking salad either. Oh, While making the different perspectives of wildlife, I think that was the funnest experience. I made the film the way I did because I just wanted to bring out the humorous side of it without doing too much. But the main reason behind it is because animals in my country, they just run wild. Like even if it's a zoo, like these, these acres and acres of land, of animals just running around and just doing whatever they're doing which gives them a chance to bond with this with with other animals and just enjoy the wildlife without being restricted compared to london where obviously as you can see in my video the natural history museum like it's got stuffed animals in there I mean, that's just funny so i just wanted to bring out that humorous side of it and just compare the two and contrast and educate people at the same time as well like you know what wildlife is back in africa and what it's like here in the uk yeah i decided to use films that everyone was familiar with for example like dude raised my car i feel like that film brings out the humorous side just one scene people will be familiar with the scene and they'll be able to catch up with it and uh, madagascar as well 
that film is known by everyone almost everyone so there wasn't an, there wasn't a lot of problems actually because i was using my phone to film so i had access to all the footage maybe the only maybe the only problem that i faced with this video was finding the right voiceovers because i wanted to use something that people were familiar with and something funny as well so that was the only challenging bit but everything everything else it was easy and i enjoyed doing it by the way i uploaded this film on my youtube channel because i'm an editor so i make like all the videos that i make i try to show them on my youtube channel as well just to show the progress that i've been i've come from basically from the beginning of this year to where i am right now through my videos i'm hoping to screen it like on festivals as well The reason why I made Letter to a Loved One in a text format is because it's a conversation that my mum and my grandma had a while ago, like she was telling me about her. So I thought, okay, cool. How am I going to bring this to the present, but still have that nostalgic feel to it? Yeah. And the fact that it was Mother's Day coming up soon. So I just thought, why not make a film that's going to remember my grandma and my mom on Mother's Day? I got inspiration from online videos where, like, let's say Facebook or... Mostly Facebook. I see these videos on Facebook. Yeah, mostly Facebook where they talk about, like... um a mother and daughter relationship or father and daughter or son relationship that is really touching the problems that came up when i was making letter to a loved one one was we were trying to send um the messages but through imessenger they were not fast enough so we just decided to send them through whatsapp because that way it's quick and you can see what's happening Home is peace and family. Home is love and belonging. I would say that it's the reconnecting with family and friends. It's the enjoyment of authentic food. Even the street food is organic and is made right in front of you. Well, most of it. No preservatives or chemicals in the food. Everything is fresh. Getting together and going to the beach while eating smoked seafood with my extended family and friends is so relaxing. Reminiscing on the good times back in Uganda makes me feel like I do belong. Especially if I'm back in England where it's cold and can sometimes be lonely. However, I also love living in my second home in London because of its endless opportunities and the chance to engage with different cultures and identities. Like being able to travel to different towns in London is so fun because every town is different unlike Uganda where the landscape is similar across the country. I feel like I have two homes, one being Sierra Leone in West Africa. When I think of Sierra Leone I think of how the sounds and smells of home in Africa is different to my initial home in England. There's a sense of freedom that you feel when you're back home. Here in England you feel restricted and bound by rules but back home there's nothing holding you down. The stories that my parents told me about their childhoods kind of come to life when I actually go to their hometowns. However, it's hard to feel that everything is perfect in a third world country when there's so much corruption and lack of infrastructure. My other home in England, which is my place of birth, is where all my immediate and extended family and friends are. Although I love going to Sierra Leone, I feel like my whole life is in England. 
Although I've created memories in both Sierra Leone and in the UK, I feel like both are my home because my family are there. I find peace in both of these countries. It's the love and memories created that makes us have a sense of belonging. We made the film this way because we've both got two different experiences. For example, I came here when I was a teenager in this country. Yeah, and Sophia was born in this country. So the difference is quite big. And the fact that we're both from Africa, we just wanted to show that and just kind of bring that out and compare it to London and just see the the pros and cons of living in Africa and the pros and cons of living in London. Yeah, for example, one one was not being able to recover the footage because we literally um put everything up on the timeline, but the next day when we opened the timeline, it was just not allowing us to see the footage. But then again, that all comes down to the location. So, because we, we were doing it on two different laptops, so I think that confused Premiere Pro as to where the 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 footage like is saved. So that was a little bit of a problem, but we managed to sort it out and recover all our footage and use and used it. Yeah. Yeah. The other problem that came up was finding the right pictures to use for the film because we wanted to match with the things that we're saying with the pictures. So that that way it has um a connection throughout the video, but finding the right pictures took a little bit of time, but we got there in the end, and we made it happen. I screamed this film on my media platforms as well because it's something that talks about two different actually not even two talks about three different cultures, so I just thought that is exciting and fun for people who have never been to those countries or experience the culture me i basically tell them about my youtube channel i ask them to subscribe check out my content and just like and share comment so that's how i got people to watch my video and by sending it to like family members and friends as well or like all my whatsapp contacts my facebook contacts things like that just to get it out there so that you know people can know what i'm about in this module, I've learned that you don't have to stress yourself over how you're going to film something or get something that you really want. I just, I've learned that you should just go for it with whatever equipment that you got. As long as you can make something out of it, you can just go for it. And that will take you far because all that matters is how far are you willing to go and get it. It doesn't matter if you've got the right equipment or not, but how far are you willing to go and get what you want? The inspiration I got from the films we discussed in class is that you don't have to have a big budget to make a film. As long as you have, you've got the idea and determination, that's all you need. And to conclude, what I've learned from the module is that for you to dig into your deeper creative mind you have to be open-minded and just enjoy the process as it goes because you can come up with things that you didn't even expect in the beginning of the project